All right, it's Terry here from Hamilton Public Schools. I'm just going to make a quick little tour through the uh, Chrome OS control panel inside of Google Apps control panel. So this happens when you have even one Chromebook or if you have a few thousand Chromebooks. This is how you uh, manage them. This is how you decide what apps go on them. This is how you um, secure them. I'll give you a quick little tour of that. So, All right, so what you're seeing here is the uh, Chrome OS panel. It's under, uh, when, when you first order Chromebooks, you're going to see uh, Chrome OS uh, added to the services tab along the left hand side. Uh, and you can see, you can set done, you can see, you can set different uh, parameters for different organizations, different <coughs> sub-organizations in your organization. So I'm just going to go through the ones that we've set generally here. So you can see there's uh, six tabs across the top. There was only two at one time and they kind of keep adding services, which is awesome. It's kind of if you've been in Google Apps for a while, you know that's what they do. So under the first screen under user settings, these follow the user obviously from machine to machine, no matter what they're logged into. So it's going to always lock. I've got this one set to automatically lock the screen when it's idle, again for security, and I've set that to the lowest possible number we can. Um, we've disallowed incognito mode, uh, incognito mode in Chrome uh, is um, allows you to surf, surf you know, um, incognito <laughs> okay and so we don't want that we want people to be signed in and and track the history and all that stuff if we need to go back at it uh yeah and chromebooks are generally used by students in our district but staff as well um proxy settings we don't use proxies but uh those are your those are your options there um this is a new feature to enable screenshot you do a screenshot by holding down the control key and then hitting um the screenshot button which is the one that looks like three or four boxes together um, right beside the decreased brightness screens right above the six key on your Chromebook um, URL blocking so we do filtering inside the district we don't have anybody taking Chromebooks home to this point so you could use this to um, you could uh, you know cut, cut and paste kind of an, uh, a list of uh, URLs you want to block in here uh, another thing we're using this for we could use this for is if you needed to uh, when you're writing your your tests it hasn't been quite fully set up yet with um, Quest A Plus but an example that you could do here is if you wanted people to only be able to access Quest A Plus on the Chromebooks you could put uh, star in here and that blocks the internet all, all of the internet and then do a blacklist exception down here um, and uh, accept Quest A Plus and any sub uh, sub pages on there uh, plugins to block you could actually set uh, if you want to block block certain plugins if you found they were problematic within your domain or they conflicted with things you're already doing you can block certain plugins by name and then these are just different uh, types of plugins to allow or not so we're letting users configure most of this stuff um, as far as browser features go, we've left these at the defaults. We're saving browser history, right, by default, and um, and the browser options. So we kind of left these most at the default, except we've said we don't want to autofill forms, um, sort of just to kind of you know make these as generic, the devices as fairly generic as possible. Yet they do carry the the student when they log in on one Chromebook versus another, they're going to get their bookmarks and all that stuff. But uh, so we don't use password manager. Um, we don't use the show password feature. Uh, we let them use Google Sync though so that again when they're signed into the Chrome browser at home they can bookmark things, they can uh, install certain extensions and then when they sign into a Chromebook at school those all those come and show up automatically. And um, so we can again here's the great place where we set the URL. So we've actually told these as soon as the students log in it actually loads this particular URL which looks like this. It's a custom page, and this, again, this is available on the uh, um, googleguide.epsb.ca site. There's a template for this page if you want to make your own for your district. All right, back to here. Um, Omnibox, we just set, uh, leave this as the default. This is the Omnibox search provider. We're allowing students to plug in USB devices um, or plug in SD cards to uh, add extra memory or transfer videos or photos onto the device. Uh, there's temporary storage on the Chromebooks. And uh, the last two allowing for uh, different kinds of input and output. All right, so those are the user settings. Into the device settings themselves. So these don't follow the user from uh, device to device, but again, they're settings for all of the Chromebooks in Edmonton Public that are enrolled. So the first thing is we don't allow guest mode. So you have to be a user in share.epsb.ca in our domain uh, to be able to even sign into these books. 
Um, yeah, so you could add other domains in here if you had more than one domain. Let's say you had a staff domain and a student domain. You could allow list all the domains here of uh, that people could use to sign into the device. We only have one currently, so that's what we've got here. And then um, we're letting people manage the release channel. That's because um, um, you know we don't want to have. We got some devices that we're running on beta channel and some that are on stable channel. We want to let let uh, let that happen. So. Mobile device roaming. Uh, we don't have 3G or anything set up on any of these, so we don't allow that. Um, we don't want to, you know, have just for VoIP reasons. We don't have uh, users' actual photos show up on their home screen, so I've got that uh, turned off. Uh, they enroll automatically. That'll help us. Uh, we initially sign up for them. There's a quick process to enroll them, but even if you didn't do that and just signed in, um, they would actually. If you had to re-enroll them, uh, they would actually just automatically enroll in EPSB as long as you signed in with an EPSB address and um, yeah we're just leaving the local data so this with this last one here erase all local data after each sign out by not erasing it this just means if a student goes and signs into that same Chromebook again after you know the next day or the week a week later they would actually see them of the, some of their local data uh, still in the file manager on that device so it, it does hold it temporarily for a couple weeks Okay, and we're allowing them to auto update. If you have a really low, uh, you know, weak wireless setup in your school, you can also um, not auto update. I like to leave that on because you're always getting the latest version of the OS. And there's lots of improvements that have come up even the last you know, few months. Um, <clears throat> we haven't uh, set the restriction here um, to, to the Chrome version because, again, we have some that are running at beta and randomly scatter updates. So this is where you could actually, uh, you know, instead of it if you have a whole bunch of Chromebooks and every you know in one site and there isn't great wireless coverage uh, or network access you can just scatter these so it's not going to download all the updates at once yeah so that's device settings uh, shipments uh, that tab just shows you uh, under devices uh, under devices that's actually going to be a listing of every single device you can see we have 2900 devices total you can click into any device and see uh, what firmware version it's using, what platform it's at. You can see these are running the latest version of the OS, that kind of thing. Um, the networks, this is a good one. So this actually tells you, uh, we've actually set a Wi-Fi network um, for these Chromebooks to connect to automatically. So uh, after they're enrolled in the domain, they automatically connect to this SSID um, with a, um, yeah, with an encryption. Uh, the WPA key and applications this is the fun part so this is where on the last tab here again they just added this in the last couple months but here you can actually go in and, and uh, say which different applications you want installed and I put that in quotes installed on the Chromebook so basically is adding links to the to the applications page so um, you can see we're allowing all apps and extensions except the ones I block uh, we've done a few little testing to block which ones and you can see when we go to manage the blocked ones um, we can see a listing of uh, which ones we've actually blocked over here. Just some 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 games and things that wouldn't really be, um, you know, educational. Uh, and but again, it's not an exhaustive list. More just a testing of what we can block. So if someone did suggest, you know, this is this certain app is a problem, we can actually get that blocked. And that goes for extensions as well. But here's the cool part: we can also pre-install apps and extensions. So under this one, we go to manage pre-installed. Now we could just click on these are the ones that are pre-installed. So when a student signs in to um, a Chromebook in Edmonton Public Schools, the all of these applications show up in their apps list automatically. So some of them they already have, right? Of course, but some of them like GeoGebra, which is a, a graphing setup for um, for the um, three and four math. Um, Google Maps, Khan Academy, 3D Tin, Typing Club, those are some just general ones for now. Um, you can also add all free apps with one click or kind of scroll through the different suggested ones for elementary school and put them in there. Now, I didn't add these in to the domain because what I did instead was we don't fill up, all, you know, have 16 screens of different applications for people to go through, but what we did was we actually said they've just come up with this again in the last little while is we can make our own domain collection so we can say when they click on Chrome Web Store when they're on the Chromebook or even on a browser signed in to their share account or their Google Apps account they when they click on the Chrome Web Store the first place it's going to take them to is a private label store so our share store it'll and it'll list just the apps that we add to this list so into here this is where we put a bunch of different applications um, that we think and extensions that we think are value are valuable and um, you know they will come in and they'll see just these ones they're not going to see you know um, you know 
different games and Angry Birds and all that, they're just going to see what they see here. And I can give you an example of that. So when they go to the Chrome store, so if I open a new a new tab here, the first thing I click on is the Chrome Web Store. Where it comes up initially is the for share.epsb.ca selection. So it doesn't come to the, the uh, home, which is typically where a browser will come. It'll come to our own store. Now, I don't see a whole lot here, mainly because I've already added most of these things. So if I haven't added them in, um, they'll show up here. It'll be a full page worth of apps. But because I've added most of these, they're just on here. And then if I decide, yeah, this is something I'd like to use, I can just click on Add to Chrome, and it'll, it'll add it in for me. And it'll be on my account whenever I log into this computer again or a Chromebook or anything else. It'll, it'll be there. So that's uh, the private store there, and um, I haven't enabled any other uh, options down there. So that's, the, uh, that's kind of the rundown of all the different settings you can set for Chrome OS. Again, you can set custom settings for different sub-organizations too. So you can have uh, a sub-organization called uh, you know, students and a sub-organization called staff and have different apps, or you might have you know, sub-orgs by division, and you could have different applications pre-installed and in the store for those different uh, groups. Because anytime you see this organization's selection uh, section at the top of the, one of these tabs, you know that you can sub subdivide what you're offering to the, you know, these settings for each different organization. All right, so that was a quick tour of Edmonton Public Schools uh, Chrome OS setup in the control panel. Hope that was helpful.